This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. Oh, Stanley. <sighs> you know... You really aren't going anywhere, and I don't say that deceitfully. I truthfully mean that there isn't a story down here. The story was back up where I told you to go in the first place. Right now, you're just running around looking at empty halls. And frankly, that's perhaps even more infuriating for me. So why don't you throw me a bone, give me a chance, and just let me tell the story I want to tell, hmm? Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Aha, uh -huh. perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? It's nothing. No one's even built this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. It's just a bunch of skybox and dev wall textures. That's it. Is this what you were looking for? Was it worth ruining the story I'd written out for you? I put a lot of time into that, and now you... Well, here you are now, just looking at nothing. To think that that's all I needed to make in the first place, just a whole lot of nothing, and you would have been happy. Well, hey, you still need a little something to do. Am I right? Here, let me load up another map. See if there's something in here that'll keep you occupied. 
Ah, here's one. Let's boot this up. We'll see if you like it. Well, Stanny, is this any better? I don't know why it would be. This map wasn't even made for you. At least I created a world specifically with you in mind. I wanted to make you a leading man. This one, well, I'm afraid you're on your own there. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got his job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That, or with drug money, also Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Hold up, Westport. I spent so long talking about you, why don't we just take a break from that and talk about something else for a change? Let's see. Well, according to Wikipedia, more than 90% of the night sharks caught off northeastern Brazil contain mercury concentrations higher than that considered safe by the local government. Now, this is fascinating. Don't you want to know more about the night sharks? Oh, no, of course not. All you want to hear about is yourself, isn't it? Well, fine. You haven't listened to me once so far. I can't expect you to turn that around now, can I? Ah, <sighs> is this the end of the line? I don't suppose this was a particularly fulfilling experience for you, considering not a single art aspect in this map was created with you in mind. But hey... You're a creative kid. I bet you can come up with a story about this place and why you're in it. And while you're doing that, why don't you think up an ending too? Because you certainly won't find one here. I'm afraid that's the long and short of it. This room and these walls are all you get. Maybe the story ends when you decide you can't live in this futuristic science fiction dystopia world and you gallantly commit suicide. Or maybe you stand in this spot for all of eternity to guide and greet other travellers like yourself who pass this way. Or maybe you just get bored and you quit the game. Heck, anything's an ending if that's where you stop playing. But whatever ending you write for yourself, Stanley, you won't have my help. You turned your back on me, and now I do the same to you. So, good luck. I think you'll need it. And I sincerely hope that everyone lives happily ever after. Wait. Hold on. What are you what are you doing? Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back.
It's sad, I know, but all stories must come to an end. Of course, they say it's the journey that truly matters and not the destination, and I like that idea. To think we might value the paths we walk as much as the places they lead us. Now, I don't know what sort of story you've ciphered out of that world you've made for yourself, but I hope that being the leading man was everything it's cracked up to be. I know it can be a little hard getting around without someone looking over your shoulder, but this is simply the nature of freedom. Besides, I haven't really gone anywhere. Maybe you don't want a guide, but I think I'll always have a place here at the end of every story. I'll step in and wrap things up with a nice piece of dialogue and a reflection on life that makes sense of whatever path you've chosen to walk. And for now, I'm happy to be the destination instead of the journey. But only for now.